In this video, I want to share with you a riser that I made for my Garrett Wade dual axis bench vise. So I really like this bench vise and first I want to show you a few reasons that I really like it and features that I find valuable in my shop. First off, uh, the many different orientations and one of the things, the, one of the main reasons I bought this was so that I could mount something in this orientation like an axe or a hatchet where I can grab it this way and have access to the edge like that. <clears throat> but for the standard vice settings, it can also go this way. Another key feature of the other ones on the market like this is that it has a uh, nut here, a bolt here to grab and it can and it holds steady. A lot of the other ones will can, they'll be free until you, until you grab, clamp something in them, which takes away the whole point of having this as a third hand because one hand needs to be holding the vise while you're jockeying it. Uh, so having the ability to lock it and hold it and then use it, I think is essential. And then it, it can also pivot around like this, but what you'll see here, now I have it set up with all the equipment that it's sold with. So in this orientation, it's pretty normal, but if you wanna go to the vertical orientation, you can't. Uh, so what you can do is, and what I did for years, was mount it on the edge of, in this case, a, just a stand, so that I could get off the edge of the bench or the stand and still bring it around. Uh, but it's inconvenient, and even then, like, you're still cramped in this, uh, trying to get this bolt loose and so on. Well, we're like this, just one other feature that I don't use a lot, but I like having the availability is that it can also be mounted this way. All right, so that's just a demonstrating the increased versatility of this tool. All right, but hopefully you see now the importance of having a riser. I need to pick it up off the bench. So and I, I can still mount it this way if I wanted to. And I have full versatility. Okay, but now, now that I have it picked up off the bench, I have full range of motion with this thing. That's exactly the way it should be. I thought of a few different ways to build one of these, but the way I went with involved having using two pipes. So I matched some diameters and then I found a pipe that would fit inside another one. And it turns out that they came pretty much the, the, the exact same size and that doesn't work with metal pipes. So I had to put the internal one on the lathe and uh, remove some of the, ex the outside diameter so that it would fit nice and snug inside the bigger pipe. And then I didn't want this one to move. So what I did for this piece was I ended up cutting two holes in it. One I threaded so that I could put a bolt in here and lock it on the tripod stand. The other hole I ended up just uh, welding the interface between the internal pipe and the external pipe and then ground it off. And now this one, that's fixed, it's not going anywhere. So uh, that's how I ended up building this. And the other option would be to buy a section of pipe that is... Um, you know, this diameter and this long and boring out the inside for this much so that it would fit on there and then removing material from the outside. That was, to me, was a lot of cutting, um, but it's an interesting concept. So it could be done a few different ways. Uh, this way worked best for me. And now I love it. The other thing too is that it's all steel and it is, uh, it's rugged, right? Uh, this is not the most rugged vice in the world, not trying to pretend that it is. Uh, the applications that I use it for don't require that it be the most rugged vice in the world, uh, but I didn't want something flimsy here. I actually, I needed some, some real steel to, to, uh, to support it. So that is how I made it. I could probably have gotten away getting a, going another inch shorter. Uh, this is kind of the way this worked out for what I had going on. But um, yeah, it's got plenty of clearance, right? There's no, no obstruction anywhere. 
And then just for clarity, what I have it mounted on here is one of the tool stands from Harbor Freight, which for me is really convenient because I can move it around where I want it. Uh, it's not a particularly rugged frame, but again, like it's, it satisfies my needs for, uh, for this tool. So that, this is working well. The final feature of this vise that I would be remiss if I did not mention was the uh, magnetic jaws, the optional add-on. These, I use these soft jaws a lot for grabbing, holding on to knives and other tools. For round stock, these ones are nice uh, with multiple different patterns for, for grabbing onto round stock. And then there's also just a uh, aluminum, kind of grippy, but more non-marring than the cast steel or iron there. So, But uh, I use these, these um, soft jaws the most. Nice feature. Hope you found that interesting. Notes and links are in the description of this video. One other solution that Ken from the Guild of Professional Sharpeners used is to buy uh, pipes, like little sections of four inch, four inch tall sections of pipe to stand the tripod, the, the three point frame uh, up off of the bench. So it's the whole thing is sitting higher off the bench, which definitely does increase the uh, usability of this uh, bench vise. Um, so there's a couple different ways to come at it. I hope you found it valuable and I'll see you next week for the next Hot Tip Tuesday.